there folks, I'm Emily. And I'm Elk. And today we are celebrating something very exciting, so a drum roll please. This is the 51st episode of Oh My Word Podcast. Yay! A round of applause please everyone. The crowd goes wild. Uh, Woo! I know. Yes, 51st episode. It is definitely worth celebrating. It's actually crazy to imagine that we have now done 51 episodes. That means we've probably done a year or almost a year, right? Yeah, we're going to have our first. That's right. The first year anniversary is going to be soon. March. Mm. Yay, Mm. more parties. Oh, we're little baby, little baby one-year-olds. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so we are celebrating the 51st episode today. We are very excited. We are grateful to everyone who is here. And in case any of you are wondering why we're celebrating the 51st anniversary as opposed to the 50th anniversary, I say to you, how have you not realized yet that Elton and I don't do what everyone else does? Exactly. Obviously, if everyone else celebrates the 50th, we're going to celebrate the 51st, which is better than 50 because it's more. So it's a better anniversary anyway. Obviously. And also, we don't like doing what other people do yeah. because that's, those people are weird. Yeah. Um, it, yes, exactly. And that's what makes them other people because they do other things that are not the things that we do because they are other yeah. than what we are doing. Others. We are so othering people right now. Yeah. And I'm very okay with it. Yeah. And because because that's how it goes. Right. And even though there's more to say on this, it actually is a perfect segue into what we're talking about so i don't want to lose this moment because we're talking about us and other people living on like different planes and like different timelines which leads into i know the last five years whoa you know what folks it actually only makes sense that on this our 51st episode elt would nail a segue (laughs) so perfectly because we're celebrating today and that means everything should go right right Wow. And we're just going to decide it's all right because it's the 51st episode. Yeah. It's our podcast, so we get to decide everything about it. Exactly. (laughs) Hooray! (laughs) Okay, so the last five years is a a musical that was never on Broadway. It was always off-Broadway, and there's also a film adaptation. Film adaptation sounds so pretentious. Movie adaptation. Sorry, folks. Yeah. I never use the word film. Very, unless I'm talking about something that's a film, like a French film, but usually it's a movie. We all know. Anyway, uh, the ratings, so violence is a zero, language is a four, and romance is a two. So, in general terms, this is not Music Man or Sound of Music. Like, it feels more of an adult musical because of those few things. Um, anyway, it's written by Ro- Jason Robert Brown, excuse me, who also wrote Parade and 13, two other musicals. It was, as I mentioned, not a, never made it to Broadway, so it wasn't much of a commercial success. It lasted only two months off Broadway. And the basic story is it's about a couple, Kathy and, oh, what's the guy's name? Jamie. A Kathy and Jamie. And it's about, she's a struggling actress and he's an aspiring novelist. And it's about their relationship. And it's apparently based off of Jason Robert Brown's relationship with his, his ex-wife. Well, that's what she claimed in the lawsuit. Right, or that's what she claimed. <laughs> yes. She sued him over, I guess, the life rights or something yeah. for the story. Um, but the cool thing about this play is the way that it's told. So, El, do you want to explain a little bit how the story is told? Yeah, because I didn't see the the film movie adaptation of it, so I'm not sure if it reflects it. But in the stage, first of all, there's only two people in the entire show. There's no, there's no, like choreography, there's no musical numbers, big musical numbers, there's no chorus, there's just the two people. And what they're doing is they're each mm-hmm. telling the story, one's telling it from the beginning and moving forward, and the other one's telling it from the end and moving backward. So, for example, when we first see the wife, um, she starts off with talking about how, well, the ex-wife at that point, she's talking about how Jamie, Jamie's no longer in her life anymore. Because she's talking about the, she's ta- starting from the broken part of the relationship, then she moves backward and tells the story backwards. And he starts 
um, from the beginning about, you know, how he's going to be the novelist and, you know, eventually he meets her. And the only time they cross, there's a few songs that they kind of both, they sort of have together, but they're not really together because they're both in their own storytelling worlds. But the one song that they're both on stage for at the same time, they actually interact with each other is when they get married. That is when the two timelines actually converge. But after that, then they both continue because they're still moving in their directions of the timeline. Um, so it ends the movie up, does the separating. same thing. Huh? Oh, it oh, does? Okay. I was just going to say, the movie does the same thing, but they do it, um, it's a full movie. Right. So there are other characters and there's more of a set, but they also go in the two different directions. Right. So this is a show that you might see a lot of regional theater or, so, or uh, community theater because it's very, very low budget. There, there's barely a set. Usually you'll see like a clock is projected somewhere or they have some sort of timepiece somewhere. Um, props are very minimal. Usually the actor is bringing it on with them or taking it off with them. Um, even like the point where she's sitting on the dock with her feet in the water, she actually takes like a bucket of water and just puts it down and puts her feet into it as she does that scene. So very, 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 very minimal storytelling. And also Jason Robert Brown has a, has a style. I've, I, I know of 13 and Parade. I haven't seen everything else that he's worked on, but he has a, a particular style where his songs are sometimes these like long ballads. Almost. He has very long songs yeah. in this musical. He's got like some seven minute songs, which that is long. That is very, very long. And yeah. sometimes they're telling a story in it, and sometimes they're like, are we still in the same song? It does almost feel like his stuff is sung through, even though it's not, but just because so many of the songs are yeah. so long. Um, yeah. That's why it gets to feel like that. And you also have, so you have a few different factors in this, even though it's, they keep it moving because. Someone's always coming on or off or like singing their part, you know, what's going on next. The story itself, I mean, you're talking about a relationship. So I guess maybe it could be relatable people. You have Jamie, his career is taking off. Um, you know, he's making it big as a novelist and Kathy, her career is tanking. Um, it's not going anywhere. So she's feeling very jaded, and especially because Jamie's getting so, is, is enjoying so much success. I think eventually he ends up having an affair also. Um, and he ends yeah. up moving out on her. But um, it just, they're each telling the story almost about, yeah, they're just each telling that story just from different points of view. So it's really the structure of it that's probably the most unique part of this and the most interesting part of it. Like, oh, they did it like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting way to do that. Looking One looking forward and one looking back almost. I wish I had seen it live. I mean, the, the movie's good. The one, it stars Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan, who... Um, they're both fine. I don't really love Anna Kendrick, but she keeps on ending up in musicals. Yeah, everyone's like, like she's with her. fine. Yeah, and she sings. There's just something about her that I, I don't know. Maybe maybe because people are like so into her. Hey. I'm just kind of she's fine. Uh, Jeremy Jordan also in Newsies and but Jeremy Jordan. If you ever see like you got to look up clips of Jeremy Jordan doing um, just different songs and stuff like that. He puts everything. Into what he does. I don't know if that come, if it's like that on the film, but anytime I've ever seen clips of him or anything of him, because I never I haven't seen him on stage yet, but it always seems like all of him is being put into what he's doing, which is a very. I, I think the audience likes to see that kind of stuff. You like to you like to yeah. know that they're loving what they're doing. They're giving you everything that they've got. Um, he he, I, you get very much get that feel from him. Yeah, I think it might be his audition video for this musical that you can find on youtube i think it's him it could be the guy who actually played him off broadway but i think it's jeremy jordan's audition and just like it's a video of his audition but in his eyes like you can you can feel the passion of the song or maybe it's an audition for something else but he uses a song from the last five years i don't remember but it it's a very my acting teacher shares it with us all the time because it there's so much yeah in that um Anyway, so I I think I was just going to say I wish I had seen it on stage because as a movie it was still really good and they still did the timeline thing, but I think this is a musical that is, like like you said, the style of it is what's most engaging. Yeah. So you, you lose a little bit of that when it's a movie because it's not just the two actors, there's all the side characters and I think there's, well, there's dialogue, so... I assume there's more dialogue than there is in the play. If it's just two people and there's like there's sets, they go to real places. There's it's a full movie, right? And it still is it still tells the story and does it in an interesting way. But 
I think probably live on stage, it has a real theatricality. I, I love interesting theatrical devices. Yeah. This is very, very minimalist storytelling. The, you could put on your entire cost is your lighting guy and your two actors. Okay. You need to, and, and your director. Okay. And your sound right. people. Fine. <laughs> no, but it really is. It's and especially for Broadway musical. It's even next to normal and Dear Evan Hansen are probably the next two. I'm sure someone will call me out on this if I'm wrong, are the next two smallest Broadway casts. Um, mm -hmm. One of them, I think, has got like five people, six people, or six people, seven people. Really, really small Broadway casts. Not big musical numbers. I guess the Fantastics is pretty small, too. But this one is really only two people. The only the only smaller you can get is a one-man show. And yeah. and really, they didn't... There's no... There's no... Not really a set, very little props, and they're still... What, what is it, like a two-hour musical? An hour and a half? I don't... Something like that. Hour something, two hour musical. And they still, it's more for like the study of that they did this. If you're not going there for the excitement and the, and the lights and the costumes and the stuff like right. that. Also, because they're just, just, they're dressed regular. Um, yeah. You do have some, you know, he's Jewish and she's not. So you have some of that kind of stuff in there. Um, you know, the holidays are celebrating or his mom doesn't approve of him marrying her. Jason Robert Brown is Jewish, right? Yeah. The play, right? I believe so, yeah. So that's why also the wife. But I guess his wife, I guess, was not Jewish. Um, so that's why also it's like, just because you changed my name doesn't mean you're not telling my story right now. I don't know how yeah. that was settled, but I believe that happened. So yeah, it's it more interesting. Just, yeah. But that I also means it's... there's not too much kissing. There's not too much anything like that. Right. Even though the language, right. you do drop a few F-bombs and you're like, oh, whatever. You basically like, you can't get off Broadway or for sure on Broadway these days, apparently, without talking like that. Well, I guess you could be a Disney or a Nick musical but it's just shocking yeah, people, only even though it doesn't shock people anymore yeah um there is so his songs are very long and i just have to share one of my favorite lyrics because maybe it only happens when you get really long songs that you end up with really fantastic lyrics like a summer in ohio with a gay midget named carl playing tevia and porgy uh, that's, um, Kathy is talking about the summer when she's doing like summer stock plays and a summer in Ohio with the gay midget named Carl playing Tevya and Porgy or something like that. I mean, that's just such a great line. You like, you have to love that. It's like you put everything into that one line as in like every style yes. and suggestion and whatever almost is in that line. Yeah. I just, um, it's. It's kind of got a quirkiness to it. Yeah. The whole yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. So I recommend it. I do. Do you? Yeah, it's, it's interesting as a study of things. And it is, I mean, besides for the stupid language, like there is no violence and the romance is mainly suggestion. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not great. He's having an affair. That's terrible. Bad person. <laughs> bad decision, we should right. say. Very bad decision. Bad decision. Very bad, bad thing decision. to do. Yes. But yeah, it's also, I guess there's just the, the simplicity to it and the minimalistness of it. So maybe certain people can really, maybe they do connect it or they can enjoy it like that. But if you're looking for bright colored lights and stuff like that, you're not, that's not, that, this is not the musical that, that's got it. Yeah. I wonder which is a better way to get people who don't like musicals into musicals. Something really minimal right. like this or something big and fantastic. Well, yeah. It probably depends on the person because this was more focused so. on the characters, but also because a lot of the songs are long and some people don't have the patience to sit through the long songs. And that's, that's kind true. of his style. Yeah. Jason Robert Byrne kind of has that style of these like a lot of drawn out, very drawn out kind of song style. Mm -hmm. um, well, good. That makes his work uh, distinctive, but it makes yeah. it a little bit harder to sing on karaoke night. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that no, I'm feeling, um, I don't know, some sparkling apple cider and what else is a celebratory food? Cake. <laughs> cake. Oh, wait, but that's what other people do. Do we have to be different in, like, oh. are we not allowed to eat cake or that's, see, it gets complicated. We're going to have to iron out the rules of, like, just because other people eat cake, can we still eat cake? Because we decide we're eating cake, not because other people are eating cake to celebrate. Wow. I know. It's a good 
question and something that bears a lot of thought, which means we probably have to go. Um, but thanks everyone for sticking around so far for 51 episodes. We're looking forward to, uh, 51 more at least. At least. And we hope you'll continue on this journey with us. And bring your friends along. Oh yeah, please bring your friends along and your not friends and your family and your coworkers and your neighbors and the guy you stand behind the line in at the grocery store and basically everyone. Yeah, it's fun for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The whole fun for the whole family. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, uh we'll we'll catch you next week for number 52. Uh uh-huh. Okay, see you next time everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Oh My Word. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and write a review. And please share the show with your friends. If you didn't like it, you can share the show with your enemies. Please also follow us on Instagram at Oh My Word Podcast. There we post episode updates, our ratings for each book, and also our personal reading recommendations. Music for the show is by Tim Burke. Editor is Gabriel Yaffe. We'll see you next week.